Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for this morning. You see, the word of God needs to be spoken by the power of the truth that the word of God carries. It's the only remedy for the situations that confront the world today. But the whole world is rejecting the word of God because it's the only thing that can turn the world around. Mm. Backed by the devil. So they don't want to hear the word of God. True. You can speak another word if only you don't step on them. They will accept you. <laughs> but the word of God doesn't come to make us comfortable. Nope. It comes to drill us so that we can come up from our old lifestyle and be ushered into eternal life. It takes time to prepare. Therefore, use your time in view of eternity. What did I say? Use your time in view of eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Use your time wisely. All that we have spoken about in the first phase, in the first preaching, has to do with preparing for eternity. So, the theme for my message this morning is preparing for eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are being corrected by the word of God, don't be angry with the speaker. Be angry with yourself. Your soul, your conscience. Why am I like this? Something is wrong with me. And that which is wrong with you is what we call depravity of your mind, your soul, and your heart. Depravity of the mind is a dangerous thing. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. When they could not repent, as God was questioning Adam, he just pushed the blame. Pass it on. To the woman. The woman pass it on to the devil. And God didn't spare the devil at all. Straight away, he brought the curse upon him. Even before he reached out to the woman and the man. Praise the Lord. But don't forget the theme for my message. Preparing for eternity. Oh, Hallelujah. Those who are listening to this platform, or this pulpit, be conscious of what you are hearing. Don't take it lightly. It is God himself speaking to you by using a man as a conduit to get to you. Now thank God that this pulpit is no compromise with the uh, uh, lies of this world. What about people are Changing their conviction of the word of God. That I discover a new revelation. That what I spoke in the past is no more right. I want to give you this. And they are all say lies upon lies. God never changed. And his words also never change. Praise the Lord. Amen. Preparing for eternity. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have a time on planet Earth to be used. And that time must be used judiciously. You can't extend time that is allotted to you. You can't save time that is allotted to you. You can only use what is allotted to you. And within that time space, when you are over, that's it. Praise the Lord. But prepare for eternity. It takes time to prepare. God is not in time. But he places humanity in time to prepare. So that when the time is up, they have eternity in view. So that they can Go to that place. When the message was going on, 
I've been pricking my heart that those who are hearing these things, what to bother you? Not to work upon your heart, your soul, your mind. That you don't fall under the wrath of God. When they say God is consuming fire, it's a, the Bible said it's a terrible thing to fall in the hand of the Lord. After hearing all these things, I heard something about when you willfully sin, there should be no, there will be no more sacrifice for sin. For you know the truth. But intentionally, walk away from the truth and you don't obey it. Yes, you are expecting God to have mercy upon you. The righteous God doesn't pray here and there. He's straightforward. He sent his son to come and atone for you. To pay the price on your behalf. When you were speaking, I was listening. What Jesus had went through. Not because of his sins. But my sin. To redeem me. That today I am free. To speak of righteousness. Truth. About him. I thank God for it. It's just by grace. Through faith. In Jesus Christ. That I can stand here to and preach. That say the Lord. And it's the truth. Because I'm not here to compromise. But those who are hearing about Jesus, please take it serious. Because the message, the theme for it is that preparing for eternity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you and I bless you for the introduction of this theme for today's message. You spoke a parable, Jesus. In the Bible. I'm getting to that. But in the parable. There were two sessions. Some were wise. Some were fools. Help us. That those who will come under the sound of our voice. They will become the wise. So that they will come. Enter eternity. For you say we should have. Eternity in view. As becoming children of the kingdom. Even those who have not given their life to Jesus Christ. I pray for them. That at the end of this message. They will make that decision for the Lord. That they will have eternity in view. I thank you for that. I bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I have a song. Concerning this message. That the song is saying. I have another world in view. And the message Jesus in it. Let me read, let me sing a little bit, then I continue my message. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have another world in view, in view. I have another world in view. My Savior is gone to prepare me a place. I have another world in view. My Savior is gone to prepare me a place. I have another world in view. Praise the Lord. Let me Amen. stop here. Amen. What world are you having in view, my brother, my sister listening? Hallelujah. It's only this world you are thinking about. That when the message is coming, sometimes you procrastinate. Sometimes you give excuses. Sometimes you say, oh, another time. Let me tell you, you are just behaving like ostrich who bury his head in the sun, forgetting that his body is outside. That can be hurt. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. This song that I sang is reminding you that if only on this earth, we have hope in Christ Jesus. We are more than a miserable people that can be described in the world. The Bible says so. But let's open the book of Matthew chapter 25. When Jesus Christ was speaking and he gave a parable 
of ten virgins. And that's what I'm going to read. All these virgins, all these parables is about the kingdom of God. But which I say, preparing for eternity. When I mention the word eternity, it means the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of the devil where lake of fire is. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 25. Read from verse 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom is the Lord Jesus Christ. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Where the bridegroom tarry, they all slumber and slept. Verse 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, the Lord cometh. Go ye out to meet the Lord. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our, lamp, our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Verse 11 through 13. Listen afterwards. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Verse 13. What therefore? For you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man, the Son of Man cometh. The Son of Man cometh. Praise the Lord. Amen. This parable. Jesus Christ gave. Many of us are behaving today like the foolish virgin. Especially when the word of God is coming. When I say the word of God, I mean the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about any other word from any other corner. For I used to tell you from this puppy that there's no other name given among men. That you can be saved from the sins of the old. That you can be ushered in the new for what is given to us. That we should make use of it. It's a promise that if you obey, you believe in Jesus Christ. As your personal Savior Lord, there will be no condemnation for you. You are ready to enter eternal life. Mm -hmm. But if you believe not, you are condemned already. Simply because you believe not on the only begotten Son of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All that we are preaching here is to prepare you so that whatever is suppressing you, you'll be loose from that suppression so that you can make decisions for Jesus Christ. So that when they were calling for the virgins, you will not be a fool for not carrying oil in your lamp. That when you come to the gate, irrespective you were invited, because the gate was closed, you were late in coming, the master will tell you, I know you not. The door is already closed. Oh, hallelujah. Preparing for the kingdom of God. Preparing for eternity. When we talk about the kingdom of God, eternity is not a matter of time. God places us in time, but God doesn't exist in time. When they say eternity is timeless, 
There's no night. It's only day. And in all kinds days, it's only night that brought about time. But there's no time with God. That's why when you are counting times on planet Earth here, it doesn't bother God. You can count thousand years, but it means nothing to God. You can count one day, it doesn't mean nothing to God. But your obedience, taking your time seriously on planet Earth, preparing your time in view of eternity, that's what God is looking for. But if you are playing games, you are lukewarm, and you are not preparing, when you hear the word of God, what you must do to repent towards God and have faith, hallelujah, on our Lord Jesus Christ, whose story is being told day in, day out, is being prayed all over the places. They were killing the people for preaching the gospel. But yes, sir, the more people have been sent in the mission field. Missionaries are going and preaching the gospel about Jesus. Why Jesus Christ followers are being killed for preaching the truth is because it's the only truth that can set mankind free. Amen. Amen. From the lies of the devil. Yes. If it's not precious, the devil will not fight it. If it doesn't save, the devil will not fight it. Mm -hmm. Those religious folks and their doctrines, that doesn't save. In other words, they are fake. They don't have the efficacy, the power to save you. They don't chase after them. They are accepted as the norm. But Jesus Christ, whatever you mention his name, it becomes disorder, abomination to people who are sinful. Who don't want to hear the word of God? Today, in Israel, a friend of Christians whereby Jesus Christ who is a Jew by birth himself they rejected him But after everything that God has planned to be done for his done, was crucified. Crucified, crucified, crucified. Was killed. He died on the cross. Some few good people, Joseph of Arimathias, and Nicodemus begged the body from Pilate. And they buried him in their own tomb. And the third day he rose triumphantly with a different body that can go through a wall and anything and spoke many things before he ascended to heaven, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for those believers on the earth and those who will yet receive the word of God and, and repent to what God have faith in him is going on. Yes, sir. There are some people politically in their parliament or cast net or so that they should not speak about Jesus to any other person in Israel. You should not send text message or email to anybody who is authorous. If you do that, you spend time in jail. But as a matter of fact, if Israel can do this, they know that we are getting somewhere. The end is at hand. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the time. It can happen at any time. Therefore, what are you are hearing here? Take heed. Holy seriously. Use it. And avoid damnation. Avoid the wrath of God. Avoid the anger of God mm -hmm. because he took his only begotten son, Jesus Christ Same. to pay the price on our behalf. Yes. Hmm. 
Actually, if you see what he went through, thank God, he will not go through it again. You will not abuse him again. You will not blaspheme him again. He is coming this time, not as a child that was born. He grew. You crucify him. He resurrected. He is going to come this time as a judge of all flesh. But if you are not in his team, you are condemned already. That's why this message is coming out. Believe in Jesus. As your personal Savior and Lord. And follow his doctrines. And the doctrines will pave your way. Preparing for eternal life. Use your time. In view of eternity. That's what I'm talking about. Don't brush it aside. That they are wasting their time preaching. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is God. Nobody is this. Hey! I heard it this morning. Those of us who heard the truth and do nothing about it. Those of us who accepted Jesus Christ. We were happy. But the curse of this life has pushed us away. And we go back to our own lifestyle. Immorality. Hatred. Abominable lifestyle. Do all kind of things. Thinking we have the second chance. Be one. Be careful. Repent. And have faith in the word of God. Amen. And the word of God is Jesus Christ. Yes. Presenting to us every day, yes. every morning. Praise the Lord. The virgins. Ten of them. As in the world today. Some said they will not believe in Jesus Christ. And those who believe in Jesus Christ too. To obey. The doctrines. The teachings. So that they will be saved. They have become lukewarm. They have excuses to give. Some of them retreat. And nailing Jesus Christ in their own mind for the second time. But that will not affect Jesus Christ again the second time. Nope. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. It will not affect Jesus the second time. It's only you in your mind, in your intellect, in your conscience. You are thinking that way. But this time is going to come as a judge, as a king. Those who have not believed in him, they will see that, yes, they have made a grievous mistake with their life. Hmm. They gamble with their life. It. But it's too late. Mm -hmm. The five foolish virgins approach Here, their neighbors. Hmm. Give us some of your oil. But the Great answer that they gave that if we share you with you, it will not be sufficient for all of us. Therefore, do what? Go to the sellers and buy. Hallelujah. Wise, those who are wise, have oil in their land, they find their way to the marriage supper. They went in, they were accepted, and then the marriage supper started. But their name is in a book. The foolish five, their names were on the book. When they came, they come and knock. What happened? What the Bible said? <laughs> the Bible said, <laughs> I say unto you, I know you not. What therefore? For you know not rather the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. As we are saying this, the coming of the Lord is going to happen as a thief in the night. When some are slumbering, when these people are didn't take any oil, and the cry, the, 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 the cry came, those who are ready, those who are cleansed from their unrighteousness, they were ready for the Lord. And they were ushered into the marriage supper. Those who are not ready, 
They went out to get ready. Before they came, the door is shut. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. That's why Jesus gave this parable. Jesus gave this parable. Why do I tell my team this way? Prepare for eternity. If you don't prepare, having eternity in view, or view of eternity, that A, hey, when today, I happen to close my eyes. Last night I slept. If God didn't cause my breath to be in my nostril, I will wake up this morning. I will have even the energy even to stand here and speak to you. And that's the end of my life on planet Earth. Oh, having eternity in view. My time that I have, I want to spend it righteously, judiciously, so that the devil will not give me things unimportant to waste my time on and forget the important things so that my focus will be on the purposes of God, preaching the truth, telling the people the truth. That's what they must do to avoid being unwise. We heard what happened to the wise, the foolish virgins. They have no oil. As the message is being preached, it's reminding you that have oil. Extra oil with you. This planet F on, on which we are now, listen to me, is a place of preparation for eternity. There are pit holes, potholes. There are dangers, there are sickness, diseases on the way. But we don't speak, don't see give you an excuse not to have extra oil in your lamp. No. The wise took extra oil. For they know what are the pitfalls, the pothole, the dangers on the way. And when the time came, they still have oil in their lamp. And they walk to meet the Lord Amen. and enter mm -hmm. in the supper mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We are talking about preparing for eternity. The five virgins who were foolish, they are not prepared for entering into eternal life. And if you cannot enter eternal life, do you know why you spend eternity? You spend eternity, eternity hell. Which is not prepared for you. But because of your lukewarmness, your foolishness. If you don't make heaven, you can't escape hell. That is why preparing for eternity. It takes time to prepare. The five virgins have not prepared. They have all the time, but they didn't prepare. But the wise version, they have the word of God in their mind that in case something happens on the way and we tarry, do you have extra oil to carry us forth? And they got extra oil in their vessel. And when the time came, indeed, it happened. Yes. Those who have oil in their lamp, Ezra were in their vessels. They were ushered into the kingdom. Hmm. Eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This Bible we are talking about is the whole world. Everywhere that proceeds out of this Bible has some role to play in your life. As you receive the word of God, you are having extra oil with you. The one day. Brethren tarry at all. And in the midnight, there was a cry. And the lamps are dim. You have Israel to put in your lamp so that you can walk into eternity. Mm. Yeah. There's something important about us. That we are not of this world. If you have to be of this world, there should be no preparation. But because what happened in the garden, 
change things dramatically. The man has to give up on this body and put on a different body with our soul and spirit that we can be all shared in the kingdom of God. Yes. But if you are not prepared, as a foolish virgins, five, we're not prepared. You can't make it. No. If you don't make it to eternal life, you'll be ushered into eternal hell. That's not a place these five virgins were prepared for. But that's where they found themselves. Yeah, Why? Out. They were locked out because of their unpreparedness. But the team for this man is preparing for eternity. Yes. As you are planning every year, busy doing everything, as I've been thinking about myself now, my number, one call, my number one plan is that every moment of my time, I should be preparing for eternity. Having eternity in view, in my mind. That whenever, I, anytime it happens, I have no regret. No, no, no regrets, brother. The five foolish virgins, they have regret now. Because what? They are not prepared. They were happy. They are going to the wedding feast. But all of a sudden, because they were not prepared, they missed it. And it's happening to people today just like that. But those who are prepared, they are the people who receive the word of God and feel good about it. And accept it and apply it to their life and do the right thing. Some of you are giving excuses to yourself. But I said before, God doesn't buy into our excuses. He doesn't buy into our procrastinations. He says, if you hear my word, just obey. Do it and you shall eat the fruit of the land. You don't want to do it. Let me tell you. And every time the word of God doesn't prick you, know that the devil is on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. The devil is on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Tell them, don't do it. Get rid of that devil from your shoulder and obey the voice of God so that God will embrace you. That when you hear the cry that the bridegroom is coming, you still have oil. <laughs> in your lamp yes. to walk you to the gate Amen. that is prepared for those who are ready that when you enter the door is closed you will find yourself in the marriage supper in the kingdom of God hmm. some of you are thinking that it's just a joke it's fear when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ I want to tell you definitively that there is no other gospel that can prepare you for eternity than the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is being propagated by the missionaries. The body of Christ, the ministers of the gospel, that if you obey it, you can never miss yep. it's true. the bridegroom when he comes. You always have extra oil in your vessel. That will usher you there. This world is full of dangers. It's full of drama. It's full of hardship. But be conscious. Hallelujah. Amen. Use your time. In view of eternity. Let me say that again. Use your time on, use your time on planet Earth. In view of eternity. If I say eternity, you understand. The kingdom of God. If there's no kingdom of God, there's no eternity. Man will not be crying. Man will not be preparing. Some people don't even have one item of mind about God. That there's a God that will judge the whole world through his son Jesus Christ. You're just thinking that. Let me eat. Drink. Build a house. Marry, and tomorrow I die. That's the end. No, we're ready today. 
In the book of Hebrew, it is appointed to man once to die. And after that, you meet judgment. judgment. What kind of judgment are you going to meet? Whether you shall be cast into the lake of fire or you find yourself in the marriage feast, in the kingdom of God. But when Jesus Christ himself told us that you should believe in him, believe in his father, for in my father's house, there are many mansions. I got to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare a place for you, I will come again. And then where I am, I will take you there. If you are not true, I would have told you. Yeah. I'm just telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. There's life after this life. Mm -hmm. Your 70 years, your 80 years, your 140 years, your 969 years of like that of Methuselah means nothing mm -hmm. if you can't make eternal life. Mm -hmm. The Bible is preparing using your time with eternity in your mind, in view. If you have that, you will not waste your time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you manage your time well, then you can be focused on the purposes of God that you do his bidding. But if you cannot manage your time concerning things on planet earth and eternity, you can't even manage the purposes of God. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> Certain strategies to get you busy doing unimportant things that you don't have time for important things of eternity. Eternity is an important thing to be done. The time that we have here, why is working? Why is building? Why is marrying? Why giving to marriage? We have to spend the time that we have in view of eternity so that God can see that we are focused. And the main things of his is his purposes concerning our life and the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ, he says something that prepare for you don't have any hour to be spent. The time that you have, prepare yourself. If you waste your time in preparing for eternity, you are doing the bidding of the Lord. And he will bless you. The things that you miss while preparing for eternity, the blessings of the Lord will make you rich without no sorrow attached to it. Some people are preparing but they are preparing is sorrowful because they don't have eternity in view. Having eternity in view is a focused thing to now, for us now, that we might be doing. What must I do to please God? How am I preparing when I hear the cry? I'll be ready to meet the bridegroom. Am I really preparing? Do you have extra oil in my lamp? Do you have extra love in my vessel? That when the oil is finished, to the case of this life, I have more oil to replace. And do you know that oil? That oil is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That oil is the Holy Spirit. Extra oil to be in your vessel. That when you hear that sound, that cry, you put it into your lamb. Then you can continue your journey in inter eternity. Some of us are hearing this. It's like a tale, a story. But this is with this parable. This is spoken by who? Jesus Christ, Jesus. our Lord. Yeah. Every parable that Jesus spoke in the Bible 
they all have their relevance, mm -hmm. their importance. That's why when I hear it, I take it serious. Having eternity in view. Use your time in view of eternity. It's a powerful statement. That's right. Mm -hmm. I am kingdom conscious. As I'm standing here, whether I preach to you, it comes back to me yes, that the life that I'm living is it pleasing to God? As I'm talking about the foolish virgin, am I among the wise virgins yeah, yeah. who have extra oil in my vessel? Mm -hmm. The wine, the cry is sound that the bridegroom is coming. Will I be prepared to have extra oil and put into my lamp so that I have light to enter that kingdom? Those who don't have extra oil, they don't have lamp. They can't walk because there's no light, no lamp. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is talking to us in diverse ways, in parables, so that when we hear it, we apply it to our lives. Why should Jesus Christ use these ten virgins to talk about the kingdom? That's right. The first verse of his parable is said, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went both to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. foolish. Hmm. Hmm. They that were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Where the bridegroom tarry, or oh, they slumber and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom is coming, Go. or cometh, going out meet to meet him. Mm -hmm. Then all those virgins arose who were invited. And trim their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, no, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And why they went to buy, hallelujah, the bridegroom came and they that were with ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door, and the door, and the door was shut. Afterwards came, the, came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord. Some of you are going to say, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, Lord, open us the kingdom of heaven. And he will answer. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Some of you are going to hear that. I know you not. Because you think the kingdom is just free. If you don't prepare, have vessel, oil in your vessel. It will come to sound that I know you not. But if you have oil in your vessel, your, your vessel extra oil, which is Jesus Christ promised us, that it is a spirit that I go. When I go not, the Holy Spirit will not come, the comfort will not come, which is going to be your oil. The way I tell you at all, and you waste, you use the oil that's in the lamp, you still have extra oil, which is the Holy Spirit. You put into your lamp that will give you light to enter the marriage feast. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I talk about every believer need the Holy Spirit, is the oil that you have in your vessel, mm -hmm. the extra oil yes. that you have in your vessel. Mm -hmm. The when the need comes, you call upon the Holy Spirit. You have extra oil to put in your lamp and go and meet the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You go and meet the bridegroom. And the door will be open to you. You will enter. And after you have entered, when it is shut, hallelujah, you are shut into eternity forever to forever and ever. ever. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hmm. Many of us are wasting our time on things that are irrelevant as at now. I'm not discouraging you from working. Don't get me wrong. The Bible says he will not work. Should not that eat. But use your brain. Your intellect. Everything that God placed inside you. That benefit. Use it wisely. Because the foolish people were not wise. That's why they don't have any extra oil in their vessel. But the wise. What about God? Build them with. They use it. Henceforth they have extra oil. That's the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit to guide us on this planet Earth to avoid some potholes, some dangers, that our navigation will be right towards the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Many of you don't know what it means by navigate. When you travel by sea, you see the sailors, they navigate. With their compass going, it guides them to where they are going. Without no navigation, no compass, they can't get to their destination. The Holy Spirit is our compass. Amen. He helps us to navigate through the storms of life Amen. that we can get there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I'm preparing you for tomorrow, for eternity, the theme is that preparing for eternity. When I say eternity, it means the kingdom of God. Because something happened on planet Earth. Another kingdom is in view. Yes. Another kingdom is being prepared. But if you don't prepare, you can't enter there. You hear about it. You were invited. But you have no extra oil in your lamp. So you can't make it. When you go to buy. Some of you. When you are hearing the word of God. You don't take note of it. When the time comes. You will say somebody preach the word of God to me. Meanwhile. The door is closed. The book is closed. Those who have heard the word of God. And have it in their heart. Based on what they received through the Holy Spirit, they entered. Those who don't have the Holy Spirit in their heart, they have nothing. They don't know how to navigate. Now they've gone back to buy oil. Before they come, what happened? The door is closed. Don't allow the door to be closed on you. Don't allow the door to be closed on you. You have heard me. It's not me who is speaking. It is the Holy Spirit speaking through me. I am just a conduit. A channel God is using to get to you. I'm not here to compromise the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no other gospel apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save you and do that most. All other gospel that is not of Jesus Christ. The Bible said those who come ahead of us they are thieves. They don't belong to the fold. Those who are coming behind us, they also don't belong to the fold. They are also thieves. But those who are speaking the true gospel of Jesus Christ, not missing words, hear them that you don't crucify Jesus Christ again, again Amen. thinking there will be another sacrifice mm. for sins. No! Mm. Jesus Christ is not going to sacrifice the second time. The Bible said he took his own blood and went to the Father and showed it to him. That's the blood that he required for remission of the sins of those who believe in me, who follow me. And the Father looked at it and said, yes, he paid a, a price for this blood which you use to exchange their deadness. You gave them your life. I will step them in my kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. The blood of Jesus 
is his life is given to those who died through the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. Because the Bible said, the very day I command you not to touch that food, when you eat it, by violating my instruction, my commandment, what will happen to you? You will surely die. They were thinking about physical death, but spiritually they die. Hence what the Bible said, those who violate God, those who sin against God, through their soul, they will surely die. And we die spiritually. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Lamb of God. Thank God for the Father's love. Thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. That the Lamb of God came on planet Earth by the word spoken. Given to who? Mary. It's amazing. For a word to form a baby in the womb of a virgin who has not slept with a man yet. The woman was doubting, was questioning God, the angel. How can this be? Since I know not a man that will conceive and give birth to a son and his nature be called the son of God. The angel who was in a, a man form spoke to the Mary back. The Holy Spirit which is the oil, extra oil that we are taking and now through this message. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you and protect you that that Holy thing that you are carrying in your womb shall be given birth to and his name shall be called the Son of God. God dwelling in humanity by which you say divinity dwelling in humanity for a purpose. That the redemption that man required from the deadness that happened in the garden could be exchanged by the blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary. He gave his life to us and took our death and died and buried the death of man in the tomb. On the third day he rose again. Life returned to man. And on that day was our day of justification. Amen. That those who believe in him, Amen. they were being justified as if there was no sin in their life all their life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Nobody can do that for you. Let me say this. Other religious leaders and prophets cannot do that for you. No, no. never. Let me tell you, the man of faith called Abraham cannot do that for you. No. Noah who found grace in the sight of God. Cannot do that for you. We heard about some three people. Daniel. Job. And Noah. They can't even sacrifice for you. They were great people in the sight of God. And it tells me that in case of anything at all. They are deliver their soul. From damage. But yes still. They can't help you. They can't help you. The only, the only one that can help you is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm so confident in this. When I look and evaluate how he came into being and what I read about him from the very old time, that the love of God that was slain before the foundation of this world was laid has become the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Who actually, according to the prophecy, a virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son. His name shall be called Emmanuel. God with us! Exactly what happened. A virgin exposed to a, 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 a devoted man called Joseph in the line of travel of Judah. David, conceive indeed. Even doubt everything, but yes, sir, his doubt cannot stop the plan of God. And she carried that. Nine months gave birth to it. And exactly what was said in the book of Isaiah, the suffering Jesus, mm. to shed that blood. 
to give life back to those who, oh, hallelujah. Ah, what I'm saying, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, what I'm talking about, deliverance, redemption, salvation, you will never be a portion. Only through Jesus Christ. God look up to him. That the price that he paid on the cross of Calvary is the one that will save you. Who is listening to me now? Will deliver you from Adam, Adamic sin, from Eve's sin. That you can also be assured that really you have eternity in view. You have a life, a place to go. Don't be deceived. You are not going to die after 90 years. And that's the end. God has not prepared us to die. But because what happened in the garden, that's why we die spiritually. But we are going to eternity where there will be no death. Death will be banished into the lake of fire. Those who are causing you to not to obey God, they will find their place in the lake of fire. But if you obey the word of God, Jesus Christ, who said, come unto me, or in that labor of heaven laden of sin of this world, I will give you rest. If you come to him, you have rest. And that rest will lead, lead you to eternal life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to conclude by saying, be not dismayed. Be not confused. Don't think about your sins. They are red like crimson. God is able through his son's blood to wash you spotless clean and make you white as snow. Come to Jesus. Accept him as your presence Savior, your Lord. Tell him that you regret about your past. I will no more be on the fence. I will go to the house of God and accept Jesus God openly before the servants of God in the church. And I begin to live for you. And I will make sure I carry extra oil in your lamp or in your vessel so that when there is a shortage of oil in your lamp, you have oil to put inside your lamp so that you can walk into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. May God bless you for hearing these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father God, I thank you. We can do nothing. We can speak nothing except that which you place in us to speak. We speak your mind to your people. I pray Holy Spirit back this voice. Those who are hardy hearted you put flesh upon their heart. Good ground that the world will fall upon it like a seed and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100. I thank you Father. I give you praise for all you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.